care too much but uh, Uh, what Kevin and Graham said. TJ and Beckle, yep. every single one of the Calvinists that I've ever encountered in my life accuses me, and Nicholas has done it in the past, but we're going to bury the hatchet and try again. Every single Calvinist does this. Faith is a work. No, we're not saying it again. Okay. John MacArthur, you vile scumbag. I think so. Then if it's paid wait, wait. for, can you be held responsible for it if it's paid for? No. All right. Thank you very much. Going back to, let's assume the debt is paid. Well, then what does a person need to be saved from, Matt Slick? You're not listening to the question. You're ignoring the question. And assuming that Kevin is asking something else and then continuing to push him as though he's a Calvinist. That's what you get from these pigs, Graham. He's saying something different and treating him as though he's an idiot because you're being an idiot, Matt Slick. Uh, it's a Calvinist. You yeah, expect? thank you, Graham. It's just exactly... Like, if I was forgiven 2,000 years ago, then why do I need faith at all? Like, what's the... Why? I mean, I mean, I, I thought it was a legit question. Doesn't that mean I'm born saved? You're not then? understanding I'm the forgiven. difference between salvation and a debt, Kevin. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> um, and then he did the same thing where he, he started with that humanism and this and that. And I said, Matt... Can you please, you know, just not not be a scumbag to me? And then he booted me off of his. Uh, he put me back in the audience on Clubhouse. So that that's that was the context of this because after he booted me, he said, you know, once once you get into the you know the scumbag or name calling, whatever. Well, you said earlier on Stanley Petrus that you you'd asked him not to treat you like a scumbag. You know, that's when the conversation's over. So, but it's okay for him to call people names, right? So I, I don't think CJ heard that context. But yeah, CJ doesn't care about context. He, he's not interested in context. He's a child. He's a dummy. Well, hopefully next time he doesn't assume the context. Different theories on the atonement. There's the ransom. No, theory. we're not talking about atonement theories. We're talking about the issue of sin. Here's what was happening repeatedly with you is I'll ask a very specific question. You jump off in a different uh, directions. It tells me you're not thinking critically and precisely, which is why you're having <laughs> yeah. well, uh, Because you won't accept his premises, yeah, and so right. therefore you're not thinking. Right, exactly. I have a problem, exactly, with the initial premises, like the analogy itself. Like it's, yeah, he's not. But he's not listening to that. I, I know, I know. You'll see. He ends up. He ends up booting me again. And by the way, this time I didn't say please don't be a scumbag, or I didn't do any of that. This time he just boots me. I'm. Tr I try to keep open mind. I, I try not to come off as arrogant because there's more than one way to look at these issues. If a legal debt is paid, can a person be held responsible for the legal? Yeah. Debt see, that's this paid? is the issue. He keeps going back to. Let's assume the debt is paid. Well, then what does a person need to be saved from, Matt Slick? You're not listening to the question. You're ignoring the question and assuming that Kevin is asking something else and then continuing to push him as though he's saying something different and treating him as though he's an idiot because you're being an idiot, Matt Slick. Yeah, thank you, Graham. It's just exactly... Like, if I was forgiven 2,000 years ago, then why do I need faith at all? Like, what's the... Why? I mean, I mean, I, I thought it was a legit question. Doesn't that mean I'm born saved? You're not then? understanding I'm already born the difference forgiven. between salvation and a debt, Kevin. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, boy. Yeah, this is and a completely then... pointless conversation. He's not listening to a single thing you're saying. I know. Yeah. Technically, no. 
Is sin a legal debt? I think so. Then if it's paid for, can you be held responsible for it if it's paid for? No. All right. Thank you very much. But the thing, but my thing is, is that your debt is not paid for until you come to faith. So then what you're doing is offering us humanistic philosophy. You're saying so what you're doing is by disagreeing with me, you're being a humanist. Because how yeah, dare yeah. you challenge the godlike and divine Matt Slick? What he says is God's word. His analogies are God speaking. You vile scumbag. Yep. So first, I didn't mind that. So he says, "What you're doing is you're showing human philosophy." But then he actually goes and says, "You are you are a humanist." Watch. Or let me finish. The debt's not paid for till you do something. The debt was canceled. At See again. Here we go. The debt is not paid until you do something. So do. here, the do. pretend that faith is a work, right? That's right. That's right. Yeah. Thank you for proving exactly the point that I've been trying to make for weeks now to these moronic brain dead Calvinists. Thank you, Matt exactly. Slick, for proving it again. Synergism, Matt Slick, okay, John MacArthur, CJ, Beckel, yep. every single one of the Calvinists that I've ever encountered in my life accuses me, and Nicholas has done it in the past, but we're going to bury the hatchet and try again. Every single Calvinist does this. Faith is a work. No, we're not saying faith is a work. Yes, you do. There yes, it is again. Do. Yep, there it is again. Exactly. So that way, so then he would say, then you're a synergist, right? Which means you're cooperating with God to be saved. So in other words, uh -huh. you're saved by your works. Okay. So I'll yeah, he's, he's turning faith into a work, and then now I'm a human. Playing games with words. Scripture says we can do no good works. It never says we can't believe. It does not treat faith as a good work that we cannot do. You won't find that in Scripture. And we're going to prove that on this stream. Have you got more of Matt Slick? Yeah, I, I'll, I'll let it play until he boots me. And then, yeah, and then even after he boots me, He's like, oh, you know, humanistic philosophy has crept into the church. Humanists like Kevin and blah, blah. You know? yeah, oh, humanism uh, like saying that faith is a work. There's the real humanism, Matt Slick. Amen. At the cross, he canceled it at the cross, not when you believe. Colossians 2. Right, so, so you're born cross, forgiven. John 9. You're born with no sin debt. You're born exactly. with no sin problem. Right, really? That's what I'm saying. How that doesn't really, make Matt sense. Slick? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And he doesn't get. I have a problem with that. I don't think that's biblical. Is, he, oh, is his last name Slick for the same reason that Creflo's last name is Dollar? I wouldn't go that far. I don't think Matt's trying to be dishonest. I think he, you know he's been doing this for so long. He's been no, I doubt it's. I doubt it's like, deliberate. Yeah. yeah. Like like all Calvinists, it's not deliberate. Oh, I don't know. But they refuse to humble themselves and accept that maybe they could be wrong. Yeah. yeah. As soon as you challenge them, you're just oh, no, you're a humanist. You're a synergist. You just don't want to um, let God be sovereign. You're a labelist. Yeah. You're like the well, I'll be accused of that. Properly. Nothing. Well, Matt, I have. See, and then there he goes again. He accused me, you're, uh, you're not thinking critically. See? Yeah, because you disagree with him. So you're not like thinking 10 scriptures critically. I can think. And he didn't even listen to what you actually said. I know. Okay. But yeah, this doesn't last much longer. He's going to boot me here in like a few minutes. I think of it say that you, you're not forgiven until you come to him. I didn't say forgiveness, did I? Did I say the word forgiveness? Isn't that what atonement is? Forgiveness? No. Atonement is different than forgiveness, which is different than justification. What is atonement? Uh, atone means to make something right, doesn't it? To be... <clears throat> okay. An atonement is something that is done in the context of what we're talking about, a blood sacrifice, that then makes the wrath satisfied. 
in the Old Testament, it was a temporary thing because it was pointing ahead to Christ. So the wrath is dealt with by atonement. Forgiveness is the canceling of the legal debt. Justification is the imputation of righteousness to you. What's the legal case. debt? There are three what, what, what's this legal debt that he's talking about that is separate to sin? That is separate to... So forgiveness is cancellation of the legal debt. Atonement. What What is this legal debt then that's separated from the legal debt? Our spiritual legal debt, by the way. What's our spiritual legal debt? What is our legal debt to God? Isn't that sin? So atonement has been accomplished so that we're reconciled to God. That's what atonement is, reconciliation to God. But our sin hasn't been forgiven yet. Well, you can't be reconciled to God without sin being forgiven, Matt Slick. God is holy. See, another attack on the holiness of God. It always comes back to, is God holy? Do you hold the holiness of God in the highest place? Or have we got, oh, the sin debt's been taken care of, but not the legal? What on earth does that mean? This is more gobbledygook from... Where's the simplicity that is in Christ here? How can you separate those things so that you're reconciled yep. with God, but you're not, are you? Yeah, it, I know it's, it's weird, right? Like it, 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 that doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. Um, it's, I, I hate to do this, right? But it's, it, like going back to Charles Jennings, how he completely separates justification and sanctification. Like they're oh, they're completely divorced, completely separate. They don't go hand in hand. It seems like Matt Slick is doing the same thing with the death of Christ. Mm. Oh no, you're not saved, but you're atoned for. But what? How can you separate being saved from being atoned for? Mm -hmm. Count. You know what I mean? It's bizarre. Mm -hmm. Charles Jennings mm. is uh... no sense at all. No, but it makes sense if you understand that it's a gift that's offered and it's a total package. Yeah, um, amen. Precision in them, you'll continue to be confused like you are. <laughs> so. But I, I still think that there's a problem with the way you're looking at it, though, is because if let's say, OK, the way you're looking at it is true and my dad was canceled 2000 years ago that means i'm born forgiven then i'm born saved. no because we have to deal with the issue of what's called the now and the not yet when people say that you're born forgiven well then oh. you have to take your own thinking and apply it when jesus 2000 years ago bore your sin in his body were the sins paid for 2000 years ago no 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 no, no. I don't, I don't think see he what he's doing there that. He's now imposing on you your challenge to his position, saying that's your thinking. It's not your thinking. It's your challenge about his thinking. Were your sins paid for 2,000 years ago, Kevin? Well, it, well <laughs> see, here's the thing. Christ died for sin on the cross, but I don't have salvation until I came to faith to him in 2012. So See, this, is, this is the problem with the way he's talking. He's talking about payment as right. only being a transfer from God's account to your account. But because salvation is a gift, that's not the only possibility transferred directly into your account. A gift can be paid for, but not received by the recipient. And Matt Slick is ignoring that aspect. Salvation is a gift. Gifts can Amen. be offered and rejected. They can be ignored. They can be not accepted. Now, he's assuming that the gift is imposed. While the man's in the coma... The gift is paid. 
But that's an assumption, Matt Slick. Where does scripture say that? Oh, look at that. It doesn't. Unless you assume dead means comatose, corpse-like, unable to believe. And I have yeah. another no, number of problems with that yeah. assumption. Depravity, yeah, false analogies, uh, false um, hypotheticals, whatever. It's what you get from these Calvinist pigs. Beckle, Jill, CJ, Matt Slick, uh, Matt Yester, you'll get that. They're Calvinist. They're following their catechism of tulip. That Calvinists make. But let's put a pin in that, leave that to one side. The gift is offered to people and there are numerous scriptures that make it clear that people are commanded to believe. Now, unless God's really confused and doesn't know how to communicate clearly, that means they can. Because he holds them responsible if they don't. He condemns them for not believing. And this is the gospel. Believe and God will save you. Amen. Don't believe and you're condemned. Eternally. Amen. You can't get away with calling God a liar. It's a gift. Either yes, the they wages, were, or no, they weren't. For the wages of sin, death, but the gift of God, eternal life, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. His question is assuming that it's been transferred to your account. It wasn't transferred to your account when Christ died on the cross. So in what way did Christ pay for the sins? The only possibility I can see is that Christ paid for them as a gift. And then he offers that gift to you. And when you accept the gift, the gift's already been paid for. But has it been transferred to your account? Only once you accept it. Oh, Graham, you're a humanist. So you're saying there's something you have to do. Apparently. <laughs> Apparently, faith is a work of man. And let's ignore scripture that says faith is not a work. Let's oh, keep boy. turning faith into a work and then saying, no, Calvinists don't teach that while they keep teaching it over and over and over and over and accusing us of synergism, which is a conflation of two separate ideas because they play games with words. And synergism yep. literally means to work together to work with and then they say oh no but you're cooperating in your will what does cooperation mean to work with go look the word up calvinists stop playing games with words they always try to be a little bit more clear with your language we... telling them not to do something isn't going to stop them they will carry on regardless they will play about with your words all day and they will drive you round the bend. I don't let them. They are disgusting. That's what they are. That's what they do. Bring them to scripture. Don't argue their points. Don't start yakking about synergism and monogism to them. Bring them to scripture. Tell them to prove it. Show it. Illustrate that. Where does it say, where does the scripture say this? And try not to delete the italics. That might help. Do not cooperate with God in our will, you blasphemous heretics. Yeah. We submit. Yeah. Yeah. We surrender. And they're succeeding in the sense that they're getting you angry, Graham. Don't let them. We totally give ourselves over to him. All the work is his. Stop lying about my position and stop lying about the biblical gospel. You're asking too much. Calvinism does not have a gospel. There is no gospel in Calvinism. Calvinism does not need Jesus Christ, Graham. There's nothing biblical about Calvinism at all. At all. Oh, not one bit of it. It's basically Catholic. 
Augustinian Gnostic Manichaeism, it, Calvinism is synergism. It does not need Jesus Christ. It is a parasite, a virus. Yeah. And stop lying about your position, even. No, they won't. Oh. Yeah. And stop conflating issues. I mean, doing stuff like that, it doesn't help the conversation at all, right? Like, if you're coming at no, something, like, you have a presupposed theological standpoint, you're holding to a systematic that was developed, uh, you know, really it started with Augustine. It was influenced by his Manichaeanism. Anyway, but you're coming to the, you're, you're coming with this presupposed theological idea, tulip, that was created after the Reformation, by the way. And then you're talking to someone that doesn't hold to your tulip. And therefore, because you believe that God, God has to irresistibly grace you and bestow upon you faith to believe, that if you if you say, no, you can believe, then that you're turning faith into a work that, uh, you know, that's that's not really fair to do because you're, you're, you're presupposing your idea of what faith is on somebody who doesn't believe your idea of what faith is. So then what you do is you accuse them of synergism because it doesn't align with your systematic. Don't you see how disgusting that is? And we'll see John MacArthur do it shortly. Yeah. Let's just, you know, how about, how about non-Calvinists? How about we start label slapping Calvinists and see how they like it? You know, let's start, let's start inventing theological terms uh, to describe people we disagree with, and we'll just start calling them that, and we'll see how we'll see how accepting they are of our labels, because apparently we have to accept theirs. Until you come to Christ, no. Okay. Okay, we're done. Okay. okay. You're just a humanist. That's all. Uh, I'm a humanist. Oh, yeah, you are. So, so he does. He oh, believes that death is oh, paid for coffee. before you come oh. to Christ. Yeah, see, so that's that. And then now he's about to boot me, right? I, now, mind you, I haven't been disrespectful to him the whole time, not once. I'm a humanist. He boots me. And then I tell him the side chat, I don't appreciate the way he uh, handled that conversation. And he doesn't respond to my comment. And there's even Kelvinists in the side chat that tell me that Matt was wrong for that. And But th that's the end of the conversation. He's about to boot me here. In the next, like, three seconds, he kicks me. That, that's the end. Yeah, so there's that. So there you go. So... I know that there, I've, I've had a conversation with Nicholas before in the side chat where he was saying that it's not the Calvinist position that faith is a work, but Matt Slick just demonstrated that he believes faith is a work. I don't like I, this is part of the confusion. It really this is it, there's, it's confusion. And confusion is of the devil. That is what they're trying to cause and they're doing it. That is what Calvinism does. It'll create confusion, is uh, confusion, so that nobody knows where to plant a flag. You are right over there, Graham. Stupid. <laughs> well, Nicholas is is backstage. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, if that's what you want. Me. I mean, here here's the thing. Did you want to? Did you want to continue reviewing videos, or did you want to? Because I'm not sure what Nicholas wants to talk about. Um, well, I'm sure he wants to to I imagine he wants to respond to what we've been talking about and disagree with us. Good day, Nicholas. Good day. Shalom, Nicholas. Shalom. Um, no, there's there's um, something else I'd rather. Um, I don't know if it's any more pleasant, but um, <laughs> rather than the doctrine. Because, um, you know, I, I'm i glad we've started discussing things again. And um, there's this email that, at least the way it's in my inbox, it looks like it was only to me and it included the StreamYard link. So I appreciate that. And um, But I guess I'll just be kind of direct with you, Graham. Like, the standard I hold for, like, where I would go on a channel that's a Christian channel I would normally not go on a channel where there is the sort of like yelling and um, quickly jumping to such derogatory language as like what was just going on here, you know? And 
So, I mean, that's a standard I kind of hold across the board. And um, I'm, I'm breaking it to come here and like talk to you about it, you know? Would you prefer I remove you from my email list? Um, no, that's not really my point. My point is like, you know, that the suddenly, I mean, I don't know if you think of that as losing your temper, but that's how it comes across to, you know, when I heard it from the audience, right? And, um, you know, um, that's... Um, well, as far as I know, that's a problem by Christian standards. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. That, I don't at this time now that Smoky Saints channel's not around. I don't know of any other Christian channel where that happens on any kind of regular basis. Um, but but Graham's not swearing or anything. I mean, it, I mean, saying something is stupid. You know, stupidity or it's moronic. I mean, it's not. He's not like, you know, it's not like going over to praise his channel where it's the where people are dropping f bombs. And, oh yeah, praise uh, his channel might be pretty bad. I don't go there, but um, it definitely yeah, praise his channel is really bad. So if that's the example that's being brought up for comparison, I mean, I wouldn't do that to Graham. That's really insulting. I wouldn't compare Graham Thank to you. Tom. But 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 there is a good point that um, that's supposed that I just don't go to. You know, it's um. Yeah, I don't. Really. Yeah, I mean, I hang out with a lot of <laughs> kind of like that kind of thing. You know, the, the gospel is you. I was critical of Kevin's mockery and some of, his and so um, conducted. Pure talk, pure talk. You're not easy to speak with. I mean, they come with the right stream together, and the one mm -hmm. that I just brought you, you don't think you should, and I would like to. You know, like if one of my reformed brothers were to lash out like that at his channel, it would just like reformed brothers, you dummy. They're not your brother, Nicholas. Go back to your race car bed. I've got no time whatsoever for somebody who refers to any Calvinist, Presbyterian, Reform, whatever different names they want to give themselves. Anybody who calls a Calvinist a brother, as far as I'm concerned, is lacking in discernment, and at worst, is probably a dummy. Like, praise I am, and one or two other people. Like, everyone would see it as, like, really shocking. And um, even the channel that, like, you know, none of us go to anymore. Of course, he has people that still do go there. Like, um, he delivers his, but we'll call it um, poison, I guess. I don't know. Not that you're delivering poison, but he delivers <laughs> his poison in like a more presentable way. But yeah, so I don't know. I'm just kind of wanting to let you know, you know, like. Well, I'm. Uh, um, I, it, it's I, I'm listening to you. I've I've heard you. I will think about it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not yeah, like because it's me and it's like a lot of other Christians would be like correct. Wow, just like you know, not that they'd be judgmental of you, but they'd think like that's not a way Summer. for a Christian channel to be conducted. You know, because we've all you know, been sinners, so we all. Um, we have no space to judge other people. So I want to contribute two things on that before we move on this. Number one, uh, Kelly, I mean, Kelly Powers isn't reformed, but Graham, I think Kelly would agree with Nicholas here because he has said something to me before about when you yell mm -hmm. at people. Um, and number two is, uh, Nicholas, do you think that the way that Matt Slick behaved was acceptable as well, where he was not listening to my points and called me a humanist? Um, in, no, um, I didn't understand what was going on in that conversation to tell you the truth so i was going to ask some questions about that but i do gotta go but um you know that i don't like stubbornness or trying to do things in like a sort of stiff neck face and trying to do it right <laughs> hey, 
my, my whole conversation with him. My conversation with him didn't last very long. It was only like 11 or 12 minutes, and then he booted me. Um, so if you want to rewind the stream and yeah, it, it seemed yeah. like he had a point to get to that he wasn't able to get to, but he only wanted to get there one specific way. So it seemed like neither of you really helped it get there. And Yo. so I didn't know what he was going to say. Um, but we can talk about it when I come back. I don't know how soon that'll be, but um, I would like to come back. And um, okay. thank you for hearing me out on this. I hope maybe it's helpful. Um, yeah. Thanks, Nicholas. All right, Nicholas, you got it, bro. Um, where was I? I wanted to share this one next. This is where I was planning to start until I heard that you'd just wow. talked to Matt Slick again. So this is John MacArthur. This most hated doctrine. And he's talking about total depravity, but he's conflating in total depravity everything the Bible says about us being able to un not do any good works with the Calvinistic idea of total depravity. Therefore, we can't believe then has to be followed with the fact that sin brings judgment. So this is your condition. You And I, I agree with him that people, the most hated doctrine is that people are sinners. If, if he left it at that, I would agree with him. And that's a biblical position. But then he adds in on this other stuff. You're a sinner and you are headed for eternal judgment in hell. That is so offensive. So this is the most hated doctrine. But at the same time, it is the most distinctively Christian doctrine. It is the most distinctively Christian doctrine. Well, what do I mean by that? I mean this. Calvinism. No. There is nothing Christian about Calvinism. Why are you expecting them to believe like, uh, sorry, to behave like Christians? keep calling themselves Christian. Even Jill the other day made a comment about Revelation and then he, and then the other half of his comment, and I don't care what you Christians say. I've got a screenshot of that. Even the Calvinists realise that they're not Christian but they keep calling themselves that. Little slip ups like that Jill, you dummy. Liar, deceiver. That's what Calvinism is, lies and deceit. Other religion has this doctrine. Did you hear that? No other religion has this doctrine. Because all other religions are some form of works salvation. Now, I want you to notice all other religions are some form of of work salvation later he's going to say all false forms of christianity and then he's going to define that as including the idea that you can believe follow the train of thought here because he doesn't lay it out in exactly the same way that i just did so that you can follow it you have to go oh well if that's true then link that with the next thing that he says that he claims to be true. And then the next thing that he says that he claims to be true, he's teaching that faith is a work. If you're able to believe, that must be a work. And I don't know anywhere where scripture teaches this. It doesn't. Us being able to believe is something that God created us able to do. That's a grace that he has given us, if you will. Some good. Not if you will. Let's, that's what it is. It's a grace that God has given us, the ability to believe. Amen. And can I, um, right. Calvinist, if you're going to assert, you know, total depravity equates inability to believe, you have to prove that biblically. And I don't see in the Bible anywhere where it's clearly, it doesn't have to be stated in these exact words, but just saying mankind is unable 
to trust God. <coughs> Where is this concept taught in the Bible? Now, you can go to scriptures like 1 Corinthians 2.14, but if you exegete it in context, that's not what it's talking about. So I would like biblical proof for this doctrine of total inability to believe. Because I don't get it. It's not possible. It's not there. They're just going to lie about you. They'll just keep doing it and doing that and lying and deceiving, straw manning, leading you up the garden path, giving you false, uh, accusing you, uh, well, throwing false dichotomies at you. Synergism versus monogism. If you're not a Calvinist, you're Arminian or semi Pelagian or Molinist. And they will never stop. They can't. Because they have to go to scripture, they would certainly have to leave Calvinist doctrines behind. Calvinism is a virus, it's a parasite. Please wake up to it. I don't believe it's biblical. And that's my problem with Calvinism, with the tulip, is that it's built on this faulty premise that man is unable to believe. Now, when you disprove that, the whole tulip fall apart and there's no need for any of it because i believe man is depraved we're, we're sinners we're in bondage to sin but does not equate inability to believe so if you take away this point if you take away the t the rest of it falls apart because t is necessary for the other four points of this systematic to be true yeah systematic theology a book written by uh, wayne gruden a calvinist shocker hold on a minute demonstrate to me from the text where it shows man is unable to trust in God. They can't. Why are you even asking? Can achieve salvation, can gain favor. Achieve. All other forms. Achieve is an achievement. I haven't achieved anything. Every, every other religion is a form of works righteousness. Achieving salvation uh, gaining favor hang on and he's gonna draw without faith it is impossible to please god gaining favor you mean like earning or do you mean like receiving it as a gift john that sounds like conflation to me with the deity or can cooperate with God. Oh, cooperate. Yes, that's right. Another one of the favorite Calvinistic buzzwords that covers a multitude of sins. It covers working with God, which is the literal meaning of cooperating. Oh, but you cooperate in your will. Well, that's actually not what we believe. What we believe is that we surrender, we submit. If you want to call that cooperation, but at best that's confusing calvin please stop it because we don't in they're saying that a person a needs to cooperate with god to supposedly achieve salvation god is the god of salvation not us he needs no assistance from us in the salvation issue Right. We, I mean, before you saved, God doesn't need our help with salvation. He's been saving people, as it were. Uh, I mean, people have been getting saved for the last two thousand years. In the sense that I understand it now, as a Bible-believing King James Bible-believing Christian, He's never needed any assistance from me. And salvation comes by and through because of Jesus Christ, who is God manifest in the flesh. He is our Lord and Saviour. These Calvinists think that, well, I mean, they're just going to lie about salvation, mainly because they don't comprehend it. They don't understand salvation at all. The fact that they keep accusing us of being synergists illustrates that point. 
I think the penny's going to drop with Graham eventually. I don't want confusion. That's of the devil. Yeah. How about we go with clarity and just use what Scripture says? You won't get clarity from a Calvinist. It's the last thing they want. We trust. We don't cooperate in our will. Who uses that language? Oh, that's right. Calvinists. Dummies. Liars. All religion. Even all. And people like um, Gavin Hurleyman would admit they are works righteousness. Don't lump me in with him. I despise his theology. Ah, Republic. How much I am. Oh, you're, you're roboting really bad, Graham. You might want to come back or leave and come back so you don't drop out. But I'd also like to suggest Charlie Michaels is an extreme synergist as well. Am I still roboting now? No. Good. All false forms of Christianity. Including all false forms of Christianity. Affirm that people are good. People are good. Are we, Kevin? Is that what we say? We are good? Absolutely not. There is none good but God. And what's the standard by which we declare that we are not good? Is it that if you have some goodness, you must be good? Is that the standard? No, it's uh, perfection. No, or the standard for goodness, God listen to me carefully here, Calvinists. I'm not going Calvinist, to. Calvinists, listen very carefully. The standard for goodness is absolute perfection. Having some goodness, if you want to consider being able to believe a goodness, does not mean that you are good. Does not mean that you're doing good, because God's standard for doing good is absolute sinless perfection. That's his standard. And we all fall short of it. You only need to sin once. Doesn't matter how much other good you do, you're not good by God's standard. So he's now lowering the standard to we <coughs> have some goodness. So therefore, you know, in the theologies that disagree with Calvinism, so therefore we think that people are good. No, we uphold God's standard that we are not good no matter how much goodness we have because we never have perfection. We never have so sinless you, perfection. Yeah, I don't I don't hold to any systematic theology. I reject Molinism or the, the, the Roses. I, re, I reject the Arminian Daisy. I reject the Calvinist Tulip. I reject the Free Grace Lotus. I think every systematic theology is flawed in some shape because it's what Calvinist. people are trying to do is understand the very God the God that created that no one fully comprehends God. So you're trying to come at this from like, I think I figured out how God wants to do everything. Their systematic theology is basically a catechism for the Calvinist. They call it systematic theology. I like to call it mechanistic so-called theology. It's confirmation bias. That's what their systematic theology so-called is. I'm confident. I'm sure. I can't be bothered going to search it now because it'd take a heck of a lot of time and he's just not worth it. I'm sure Charles Jennings, the layman's something out of it, recommended Wayne Grudem's book, Systematic Theology. Wayne Grudem was on the editorial board for the ESV, the extremely satanic uh, so-called version. Go check it out. I'm not going to run around looking for it. And then you're building a systematic on the premise that you built. For example, Tulip is built on the premise that man is unable to believe and can't do good, and they have a faulty definition of death, and they have a faulty definition of good. And they build a systematic theology based on that presupposition. Yeah. You know, if you were able to destroy the T of Tulip, from what I can gather, I'll have to look into it a little bit more. Calvinism falls apart. 
because the whole of their so-called their systematic so-called theology is based on total depravity. And uh, the Armenians have done the same thing, but then they introduced this this doctrine of prevenient grace that they've invented, where prevenient grace is what frees your will so that you can believe. Again, a faulty assumption that your will is in bondage and therefore it can't believe. Nowhere does it teach that you have an inability to believe. And yeah. see, every systematic theology comes with presuppositions that they build their, their systematics off of. So yeah. I reject all of them. Let's just stick with scripture. Let's be sola scriptura. Throw out the tulip, throw out the daisy, throw out the roses, throw out the lotus. Let's just go to the Bible. What does the Bible say? Yeah. Go to the Bible, the King James Bible, Kevin, which you seem to uh, despise. That Graham likes to uh, delete the italics from. Yeah, interesting that you falsify your own narrative, really. Indeed. 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 I agree with some of what Kevin has said, though. Or have enough good in them, a prevenient kind of grace that allows them to contribute to their salvation. That allows them to contribute. Is trusting Christ contributing to your salvation? What are you contributing? What are you putting into the pot when you trust Christ? What are you adding to salvation? You don't understand the biblical gospel, John MacArthur. The biblical gospel is trusting Christ, is accepting that you contribute nothing. It's a total surrender to him. But sure, let's conflate that with the work salvationists and the people who think they contribute something. I don't understand why trusting someone is considered doing a good work. I, I don't get this. Like if my, you know, as a, as a young child, I was not able to take care of myself. I was dependent on my parents. Is that me doing a good work or is that just me <laughs> trusting in my parents to take care of me because I wasn't able to take care of myself. I wasn't able to get my own clothing. I didn't have a job. I couldn't feed myself. They paid my, the, you know, they provided me a house to live in. Like I, I was trusting in them to provide for me. Is that me doing a good work? Is that me doing good? I, I don't understand. This doesn't make sense to me. Please explain this to me. Am I misunderstanding something here? Yeah, I, I, I can't explain it to you. It doesn't make any sense to me either, Kevin. Maybe a Calvinist can come and explain it to us. Oh, truth. Seriously, you're going to ask a Calvinist to explain something to you. I mean, in one sense, yeah, I mean, you know, get the so-called version of it. Then you'll go and ask another Calvinist. They'll give you a slightly different version. And then you'll ask a third and a fourth and a fifth, and it all come up with something different. And they'll do, all they're going to do, all that's going to happen is they're going to cause confusion. Saying that you're going to keep them to scripture and pull them in the, into scripture and, and to prove and illustrate their point of total depravity, uh, you know, tulip, blah, blah, they're not going to do it. They're not going to be able to. You can't back up Calvinism from Scripture. Why, why ask a Calvinist for clarity? You're not going to get it. More, the ones that I've come across are thicker than pig poop. Unbelievably big-headed and conceitedness. Uh, conceited. Like Veckel. Like CJ. Like Ryan, all the Calvinists, unbelievable egotism, Gnostic garbage. Every Calvinist I've heard, you get the same thing, pride and stupidity. I mean, moronity actually in the case of well, Beckel, Skyer, Ryan, CJ, John Lee on Clubhouse, Matt Yester, Praise I Am, another pig. 
Yeah, yeah. Praise the army is a sinner used. So they can choose to believe. They can they can choose to believe. Oh, so that's contributing something to your salvation, is it? Let's I didn't choose to believe. I didn't make a conscious effort to believe. I didn't need to. I was there when I got saved. <laughs> yeah, I remember it very clearly. Oh, yeah. People are going to lie. Liars are going to lie. Calvinists will definitely lie and they'll straw man you and lead you up the garden path and run around, try and get you chasing your own tail. Listen to him again. Oh. Graham, is this the clip where Lady Flowers gives the climbing the rope analogy? I don't remember. Okay. Good in me that can achieve salvation, can gain favor with the deity, or can cooperate with God. All religion, even all false forms of Christianity, affirm that people are good or have enough good in them, a prevenient kind of grace that allows them to contribute to their salvation. You mean like the Holy Spirit convicting people? I have a question for John MacArthur. Convicting so John, the world. Is John saying that only Calvinists are saved then because every other okay. Christian in the face of the history of this planet He's a work salvationist. Um, yeah, that's what he seems to be implying to me. Yep. So Calvinists are the true Christians and the rest of us are just uh, fake or something. Yeah. Well, we're work salvationists, apparently, Kevin. You we know what? I How did people get saved before Calvinism? In fact, pull it back a bit. How did people get saved before Augustine? Or Pelagius, or uh, oh, a few others. Calvinism doesn't make sense. Of course, it doesn't. Not to anybody who's a King James Bible believing Christian, it doesn't. Calvinism is a parasite, a virus, a lie, the work of the devil. It's Catholic. I've said that over a year ago. In fact, I think I can prove it because I've got somebody downloaded a video from my old YouTube channel that got deleted by YouTube. Right. So I'll probably go and get that later. Watch this space. Other <laughs> days, we're the true Christians, you know? The Roman Catholics, yeah. we're the true church. Oh, the, the, the Jehovah's Witnesses, we, you have to do the works of the Watchtower to be saved, so we're the real Christians. Same thing with the Mormons. Every cult does this. Yeah. Michael, Michael alive, said the Mormons showed him the way the Jehovah's Witnesses. They Mormon. can choose to believe. They can choose to be saved. Again, this is where he, he moves from very craftedly. You know, he, he's, he's crafting... Um. Yeah, I'd be careful about using a word like craftily here, but anyway. His message in such a way as to condemn the humanistic sinners of the, the rank and file pagans of our world, but then slowly brings in the Armenians, <laughs> okay? Well, and provisionists, and anybody who believes they're able to believe, which is seems to be the clear teaching of Scripture, God commands people to believe. He come everyone who is thirsty. The the spirit says come. The church says come. Come. But they can't unless God draws them. But as soon as he does, they're instantly part of the church. So who's the church talking to when the church says come? Well, I guess those go who God hasn't regenerated yet. But they can't hear. So talking to the air. <sighs> 
as 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 pretty much just as bad uh, with this prevenient working of grace that somehow cooperates or somehow uh, you would say contributes to their salvation. I, I don't know any good Arminian who would say that that faith in, in God contributes to our salvation because faith doesn't do anything. Faith is a filthy rag apart. The only thing Christ saves. Christ is the only one who saves. Who does he choose to save? Those who trust in him. He doesn't have to. He's not obligated to save those who trust in him. He chooses to do so graciously. Mm. And so if faith doesn't merit or earn salvation, Hallelujah. It's, not, it's not. That's why I always use the pie illustration uh, that the Calvinists try to make the two choices into I mean, two choices into one choice, the choice of God to save and the choice of the, the sinner to repent and believe and make it all into one choice. Um, and, and then they, they try to divide it up with pie, you know, with a pie and slice it up into percentages. So you see the Armenians are giving, uh, you know, man, 1% of salvation. We're saying, no, it's a whole different pie. <laughs> 100% of salvation is of God. He 100% chooses to save who he wants to save. He doesn't have to save anybody. He chooses to save those who humble themselves and trust in him. Um, and it's 100% your responsibility for your sin. And it's 100% responsibility, your responsibility to repent of that sin and trust in him. And if you don't do that, that's your fault. It's not, it's not God's fault. And so when you when you combine those two and you call it all salvation. Um, so, yeah, I don't know where the rope analogy is, Kevin. If you find it, we can listen to that sometime. That's all I really wanted to play there. Um, well, why don't we just briefly explain it? Because, you know, there's a, there's a rope sure. that's infinitely long. It goes up and up and up and up and up, and you can't see where it ends. It just infinitely goes up into the sky, and that's where it goes. It leads to God. And there's a guy who's trying to climb and climb and climb, and he's not getting very far. And Jesus comes along, you know, and he says, let go of the rope. I'll save you. And you let go oh, of the rope. Oh, yes, I remember you now. Up. Thank you. But then the Calvinist says even letting go of the uh, letting go of the rope is a work. Maybe he does get to that later because I do remember having heard that. Um, yeah. And that may have been on this one. I don't remember now. But yes, I think that's an excellent analogy. And it does seem to me that that is what the Calvinist does, is that even letting go of the rope is a work. Stopping working is a work. Stopping trusting yourself and just trusting Jesus is a work. Oh, it's something you did. No, mm -hmm. it's all something God did. And God does it when we stop, when we say, Kate, I give up. I can't do it. God, please save me. And so he does. When we get out of the way, but apparently you, you look that's up that rope, You see how long that rope is. And you're like, you know what? I can't do it. I can't climb this. I can't earn my salvation. I'm not good. I can't do it. I give up and I just surrender. That's, that's not a work, you know? And that's the straw man. And uh, it's actually quite stupid. And it's it baffles me that Calvinists continue to use this kind of argumentation. You know, it's just it's silly because there's no I, I can't say no non Calvinists. But most people that do not hold to the tulip would not say that that um, faith is is a work or something. And here's another thing. Right. It says we are counted as righteous by faith. So us trusting God is not actually righteousness. It's not something that is righteous to do. It's counted as that. Mm -hmm. so, so putting faith in Christ in the biblical use of the word good, it's actually not good. It's counted as righteousness. Because what is good? Let's remind people, Kevin. Oh, so that's not a good thing to do? Well, yeah. But what is God's standard for goodness, Kevin? To be perfect, absolute to never sinless. to never fall short once ever, absolute sinless perfection, and so we're not trusting him is not absolute sinless perfection, but he counts it as though it is. This is the glorious gospel of God's grace. It's so amazing. Yeah, you can't do it. Amen. He has done it all. And he will do it all in your life. Just trust him. 
Now, Calvinists, you can be offended by, oh, but there you go. It's something you have to do. God can't save you until you trust him. Well, yeah, that's what scripture teaches. But don't conflate do with good work there, which is what the Calvinist seems to do. <laughs> and so you're about to get into monergism. So before you get into that, I'd like to point out that it was shown to me that monergism is actually not a word that exists in the English language. Monergism no. is a word that was invented by Calvinists. Synergy is an actual word that they adopted into a theological term of synergism. But monergism was completely made up by them. <laughs> yeah, it was invented in the 1800s, if I remember correctly, but synergism... Yeah. Yeah has yeah, been they, around yeah. since the 14 or 1500s um, and it has a meaning outside of theology and it literally means to work together they've missed two things doing so. something doing work and as we look at this definition of monogism we'll see that there's two definitions for monogism that monogists give for monogism so first of all, he says monogism simply means it is God who gives ears to hear and eyes to see. Do we disagree with that, Kevin? No. Oh, well, we must be monogists. Yeah. God gave us the ears that are able to hear and eyes that are able to see. see but here's the thing, though. What they mean by that is that he gives that to you the moment before you believe. So you're regenerated. So, so he lies in the very first sentence. Monogism doesn't simply mean that it is God who gives ears to hear and eyes to see. It means these other things as well. Yeah, because they would interpret that as he gives you the eyes to he to see and the ears to hear when he's about to regenerate you. They when he regenerates you. Happens. Yeah, exactly. No, no, no. When he regenerates you, he gives you ears to hear and eyes to see. Before that, you were corpse dead and unable to believe. which is a definition of corpse that, quite frankly, is atheist. But another day, we'll get back to that one. It is God alone who gives illumination. Do we disagree with that, Kevin? Uh, no, absolutely not. No. How does God give illumination? Uh, by the gospel, hearing the word of God. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. People yep. don't believe because they haven't heard or they choose to reject when they've heard. But when people hear the truth, they know where to put their faith. He, so gives faith us illum he gives us illumination through the gospel. Yes, thank you. Rome, we'll get to that later, actually. Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing. Oh, no, it comes by regeneration, don't you know, Paul? It doesn't come by hearing. And hearing by the word of God, it comes through regeneration. That's where faith comes from. Oh, you're not a very good Calvinist, Paul. It is God alone who gives illumination. Completely agree. It happens through the gospel, through God's word, through the, the work of the Holy Spirit um, in people's hearts, convicting them of sin and of righteousness and of judgment to come. And Jesus is the light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He gives illumination through creation in Romans 1. Um, the law is written on our heart in Romans 2. And understanding of his word that we may believe. Ah, well, this is where the Calvinists would say, oh, we can't have understanding. We can't believe until God grants that to us. Okay. Nope. Disagree with that. It is God who raises us from the dead. Do we disagree with that, Kevin? No. It is God who raises us from the dead, who circumcises the heart. Do we disagree with that? No. Unplugs our ears? Ah, disagree with that. Well, Notice I don't understand what they mean by unplugs our ears. Well, yeah, that could be. Maybe we do agree. Who knows what that means? Um, but notice how there's a conflation of different issues here. So they're trying to make out that we don't think that God raises us from the dead and circumcises the heart because they believe that the dead can't believe. Mm -hmm. Because they are presupposing total inability to believe. Yeah, Let's to presuppose. Total depravity, total inability, total deadness. Hmm. Let me sidetrack side on this for a second. 
Calvinist, if that is true, how are we able to sin after we become a Christian since we're dead to sin? If dead means unable to listen to and do anything with, right? Unable to listen to God before we become a Christian by your definition of death, then why doesn't that same word dead, death to sin, mean we can't sin? We can't listen to sin. We can't trust sin. Yep. If, if you're going to stick with a consistent definition of the word dead, you must teach sinless perfectionism. And I reject that. Therefore, I reject the Calvinist definition of the word dead. Dead can have other meanings. Anyway, it is God alone who can give us a new sense that we may at last have the moral capacity to behold his beauty and unsurpassed excellency. Well, I believe that he has given us the ability. The Apostle John recorded Jesus saying to Nicodemus that we naturally love darkness, hate the light, and will not come to the light. Why? 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 Oh, yes, ignore the why. Just assume the Calvinistic interpretation. And since our hardened resistance to God is thus seated in our affections, only God by his grace, oh, blah, 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 philosophy, philosophy, right? The scripture doesn't actually say this. This is just his interpretation as though that's the only way to look at the passage. Oh, it's the only right way, I'm sure. <sighs> blah, 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 blah. Now, definition. The Century Dictionary's definition of monogism may be helpful. In theology, monogism is the doctrine that the Holy Spirit is the only efficient agent in regeneration, the new birth. Completely agree. The only efficient, able to do the work, agent in regeneration is the Holy Spirit. Oh, well, I must be a monogist. Oh, no, hang on, there's this extra little bit that they tack on, that the human will possesses no inclination to holiness until regenerated and therefore cannot cooperate. Ah, here we got this word cooperate again, which means to work with. Co, meaning with, and operate, meaning work. Let's go to etymology now. So definition from the Century Dictionary, now etymology. The word monogism consists of two main parts. The Greek prefix mono signifies one, single or alone, while the suffix ergon means to work. Taken together, it means the work of one. Do we disagree with that, Kevin? Nope. Completely agree. The work of one. What work do we contribute to our salvation? None. Zero. Nada. So once again, the Calvinist then assumes faith is a word. I, do, I definitely want to add diddly squat or diddly diddly. We can't add anything to our salvation or take away. And says, very simply then, monogism is the doctrine that our new birth or quickening is the work of God, the Holy Spirit alone, with no contribution and without the cooperation of fallen man which they're including faith in cooperation since the natural man of himself has no desire for god and cannot understand spiritual things and the first verse they list is first corinthians 2 14 which is paul talking to believers about operating in the natural man got nothing to do with the unregenerate believers were operating in a way where they trusted their own understanding. Nothing to do with the unregenerate. But sure, strip that one of context and then whinge and complain about context when we point out verses to you. Oh, you're jumping around all over the place and stripping it of the context when we're not, but sure. And then Romans 3, 11 and 12, which says we can do no good in our works. I'm still None of these teach what the Calvinist <coughs> is claiming all the way through there. There's a number of assumptions that goes on. Grant, can you do me a favor? Can you post the link for that um, article in the private chat? I want to 
go over that on my own sometime too and break down those verses they're using out of context because that might help me in my debate against church and Finn in a couple of weeks. Sure. There's the I'm sure he'll probably he'll probably appeal to those verses to teach C you can't believe. But um, I'm sure if I establish the context, that's not what they're saying. So I think that will be helpful. Thank you. Yeah, I'm blocked. Nicholas, that doesn't deal with the fact that Scripture says we are dead to sin. And if dead means unable to listen to, then how are we still able to sin? You can say, well, it's not us sinning, it's sin that's in us. Anyway, I've had enough. And you're quoting Paul there. I don't really want to read Nicholas's comments. I don't hate the guy. I know I'm going to be accused of it. I just think he's totally done. Go back to your race car bed, Nicholas. 